Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. This tutorial will explain how I removed the FRP lock on my Samsung J7. This method can be applied to any Android phone. How are we going to remove FRP lock on Android device? The short and sweet answer is that we are going to delete the user data that have stored your previous email and FRP setting, so that when you open your device, it won't ask for any previous emails stored on your device. So before starting I will go briefly on what is FRP lock and what it does. Factory Reset Protection FRP, is a security feature on Android devices with Android OS version 5.1, Lollipop, and higher. The FRP provides a built-in security feature you are able to use that protects your device and information, including screen locks and data encryptions. The FRP is enabled automatically when a Google account has been registered on the device and will be disabled if the Google account is removed from the device prior to the factory data reset. Once the FRP has been activated, it will prevent use of your device after a factory. This means if your device has been factory reset in any other way than settings general management reset factory data reset, the FRP lock will be enabled. So basically when FRP lock is enabled you will be asked to sign in using a Google account that was previously synced on your device. Now enough talk, let get our hands dirty. One more this before proceeding. We won't be taking any responsibility for anything that happened to your devices, however we will show some tricks at end of this video to solve any problem you face during the procedure. To begin with go to the link in description and download these file you are seeing in the screen. If you face any problem downloading the files, make sure to watch the video in description which will show how to download these files in details. After downloading extract the zip file and open the folder. Now you will see three files that I used to remove FRP lock on my Android phone. As I am using a Samsung device, I am installing Samsung USP driver. Make sure to install the appropriate driver for your device. For some device you might not need to install any driver at all. But to be on safe side, make sure to install the USP driver. After the installing is complete unzip or extract the Auden file and open the Auden file. Auden is used to wipe the user data on your device using Exynos file we have downloaded. After opening the Auden, you need to connect your mobile device to your PC using an USB cable. Make sure to use a string USB cable, cable that came with your device. Once connected you need to boot your device into recovery mode. To boot your device into recovery mode turn off your device and press power button, volume down key, and if there is main home button in your device, press that all three or two button at same time. Once, you see your manufacturer device logo, remove from three buttons at once. It might ask for confirmation in some devices, in that case press yes or continue using the volume up key. Once you are in recovery or Download mode, you can go back to Auden and start the process. In Auden you need to see added message now, if you have done everything as I have instructed. As I have not connected any device to my PC it's not showing added, but for you it need to be shown. Next check the AP and click AP button. This will open a new dialog, and now you need to select the Dexinos.rar file. Once selected click start and now to will start the process. You will see a progress bar on both. Once the process is completed your Android device will automatically open and you won't be asked for any previous synced email address. If you notice any problem like storage full or anything, now you can do a factory reset directly from the setting. 
Remember that I have told you in the begging about how I can fix my device if anything happens. For that also you need to follow exact process, but instead of selecting the exynos.rar file, you need to download the firmware of your device. These are some of the websites that you can use to download the firmware. If this video helps make sure to give a thumbs up and comment and subscribe to our channel for more tutorials like this. Thanks for watching.